Great, thank you very much. Um, and thank you so much for inviting me. Now, I'm uh, no expert on this topic, uh, and I'm no academic, so I've got no slides, I've got no statistics, so it's going to be really boring. Um, I'm going to speak really from my own experiences, um, and that, uh, whilst I do do research work, my experiences are of living in the city um, and of working in the community. Um, I'm a Muslim woman. I work a lot with uh, ethnic minority communities. And um, so that's, you know, from everybody who's here in the morning and my questions, I think ethnicity is kind of important for me. And I think when we're looking at the GM level, um, you know, that's absolutely critical in terms of our demographics. So the question in um, Ruth's asking is, you know, what should be done? You know, it's a million dollar question. And, I know that everybody sitting out there probably has a better answer than me. So while I'm speaking and other speakers are speaking, I'd urge you to use your evaluation forms and put down your idea on that form so that you know we can do something with those ideas. Just very quickly, um, I just wanted to say a few words about how much this is in the public domain now, um, discussion around inequalities, etc. There was a time when I think we were saying, and I was saying, on particularly ethnicity issues, where's the research and all the rest of it. Actually, this year, and in, only in the last few months, we've been inundated with papers and research um, and news stories, you know, if you can, you can pick up the Guardian, and you know, you can pick up information around this. Um, so, you know, just want to refer you to one or two of those things, just to uh, bring that, uh, you know, debate back, back to to, 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 to thinking about the areas we're looking at. So, GRF, for example, Joseph Rowntree Foundation have done lots and lots of research around this as a whole program around ethnicity and disadvantage in the labor market. Um, and, you know, their quote is, persistent ethnic inequalities in the labor market play a major part in the high poverty rates among some ethnic groups. Um, you know, and we know that around the labor market, there are, you know, the, the gap around unemployment around ethnicity is, you know, very big and it's persistent. So why aren't things working? We know uh, from TUC research again this year um, about the disproportionate number of people on zero-hour contracts. Um, you know, they're the headlines. So I'm just kind of remind, re reminding you about the headlines I see and have had an impact on me just in the last few months. Around employment and education, um, CODE, which is a department here at the university, have done lots and lots of good work around ethnicity and addressing ethnic inequality and social mobility. And again, they say impact of the recession has meant that black women and men are particularly likely to experience downwards mobility. The University of Manchester and UCL have done lots of work on a segregated Britain, more diverse and unequal than we thought it was. Um, you know, so why aren't we doing more around this? Um, the Runnymede Trust um, you know, hit the Guardian um, with the budget uh, this year. Um, looking at the conservative budget risks, widening Britain's racial divide and making millions of minority ethnic people poorer at a faster rate than their white counterparts. So I have purposefully um, kind of reflected on more ethnicity issues because that's the kind of things that I'm seeing all the time. So coming on to, um, you know, just a few thoughts in the few minutes I've got um, of what needs to be done. I haven't kind of um, thought about uh, individual kind of programs, but I'll give you a couple of examples. But some of the bigger GM level strategic things that we think we need to do and that need to be done to make a difference um, as we move into a very different structural shape of Greater Manchester um, with all the talk that's going on in terms of devolution and the Northern Powerhouse, um, you know, and all the things, you know, the positive spin that's coming through in terms of economic growth and the um, economy and the lack of um, combination of uh, the economic and social justice inequalities, uh, you know, going hand in hand. Um, so I think that's a big issue. I've kind of uh, thought about four areas where I think we need to, um, you know, look at kind of strategic themes, I suppose. So the first, uh, I think, for me, is a clearer commitment and leadership, I think, across the sector and from GM level. And we need to see that through, um, you know, policy, through um, the devolution, um, through new economy. Um, and we see that, to, to some extent, through um, uh, academia. So we've seen all day today some of the leadership and excellence through research and intelligence that we're getting. What I don't see, and I think the question is, what are we doing with it? 
And I think on that, um, you know, we need to maybe look at how we have a more academic leadership um, around this inequality agenda because they can back this with the um, evidence base that is coming out on a daily basis on research. So, no, I'm not talking about another commission, but I think on a GM level, I think we need to have something that's much clearer in terms of leadership, some sort of a hub that's going to focus on this at a GM level. Um, and there's going to be some scrutiny across GM um, around um, all of this. And you know, New Economics Foundation, if you look at some of the work they've done, they, they make some very useful um, comments on ideas that can um, you know, uh, be investigated around setting local targets um, you know, for inequality, like we have done for child poverty, for example. Um, and uh, you know, providing high-quality childcare. You know, all of these things. I think we've seen coming out of some of the research, and I'd like to see that going somewhere, in terms of a better joined-up approach and a clearer commitment and leadership at a GM level, um, led by some of that evidence and research. I think the second point I'll um, say we need to do, and what should be done, is more connectivity uh, or better connectivity. So more holistic uh, solution to things. And I think some of the sector is moving towards that and the system change debates are moving towards that. Um, uh, you know, kind of identifying the links between different complexities, um, you know, deprivation, housing, education, health. So some of these outcomes and how they are linked um, and how do we um, create a system that works and addresses some of that. So some of that work I know is beginning to happen, but we do need better connectivity. Um, I think the third point is, for me, uh, a sharper visibility. So today has been fantastic in um, you know, the brand that we've got making a difference, um, in all of the work that we hear and uh, the information and the websites that we know about. So we need that sharper visibility, but we do need to raise uh, you know, the public awareness around inequality much higher so that people, uh, you know, residents, um, communities are far more aware uh, of what's happening in a more simplistic way. It's very difficult, I think, to distangle some of the stuff that we've seen today, but I think it can be done, and I think that awareness needs to happen, and a campaign for change um, needs to go along um, with that. Um, you know, um, another newspaper article just on that issue, for example, um, it just in May said inequality is ruining Britain, so why are we not talking about it? So, you know, that kind of stuff needs to be coming out a lot, lot more. And then the final point is lots of, lots and lots of local action um, focused on narrowing the inequality gaps that you academics are going to tell us are not acceptable. So that, I think, is really, really key. So, for example, um, at a local level, um, my network is just responding to the city Manchester City Council's equality funding programme. It's not a huge programme, 650,000. Um, and we don't know whether we'll have that after the cutbacks in December are announced. But, you know, we're responding to trying to maintain that. And what we're saying to them in there is this needs to be aligned to inequalities in this city. And you need to be better aware and you, should, you, you need to be providing a leadership um, better than you are doing now around where you want to narrow these. And that's where the, any funding like that needs to be complementing and adding additionality and value to mainstream larger pots of uh, money. The other thing that I want to mention on local action, just as an example, is that there is fantastic work that goes on in the voluntary and charity sector. We've heard some of that before. Um, from, from other speakers, and I think that we need to think about how we uh, nurture some of that instead of destroying what we're doing at the moment. So um, an example of that is um, from um, London, actually, Race for Opportunity, if you look at the work they do, they did a fantastic programme around mentoring um, young people. So I really think, for me, that one thing is really important. I think mentoring actually works. I think this shows evidence and results that Mentoring and social networking actually helps individuals climb that ladder, get out of those issues, um, facing them in terms of employment. So 2014, they took a cohort of 90 young people, um, um, ethnic minority, working with Job Centre Plus, the Ele Elevation Network, um, and about 10 private sector employers. And over a number of months, provided a fantastic uh, mentoring programme 
which ended with 60 of the 90 in full-time work, more confident and much better connected. So I'd like to see many more programs like that, really, that take a very local uh, uh, action approach to, uh, uh, you know, to um, solving a solution, really, to what we see are really wide inequalities in the sector. So I'll leave it there as a thought.